We're going to work today from primary sources, which are real objects rather than pictures from books or photographs, to do some tonal drawing. Now remember, tone is trying to show light and dark in an object to try and create the illusion on a page that the object's three dimensionals. Now if you have a look in the art room, there are different examples of um, A star standards by my board. Um, but today I'm just working in my little room at home. Um, just going to show you how to kind of start your tone drawing of your insect. And again, a few reminders about pencils. You might have already got your set of pencils. Remembering that your HB is Mr. Average Pencil. And as the number increased towards the BN, towards 9B, the lead inside the pencil gets softer, plus your tone gets a little bit darker. Remembering that the B stands for black soft on the side of a pencil and the H stands for your hard. Now I don't want to see anybody using the um, H pencils in any of their art lessons. You save your art lessons for more precise sort of graphic design work. Now I love insects and creepy crawlies and I'm really really looking forward to drawing this orange brown stag beetle from Indonesia. Now I've got a little A5 sketchbook and um, as you can see I'm just pulling back from there and you always 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 start your drawing drawings in the middle of a page so that you can fit it fit what you're drawing on and you're always 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 observing um, so you're doing observational drawing, you're always looking constantly at what you're drawing. So the answer to how you get things accurate is by concentrating really hard, focusing and observing all the little tiny, tiny details. Now I'm going to start here, okay, so I'm just going to angle the camera or the video, so I'm just videoing this on my own, I should have got somebody really maybe to hold um, the phone, so I really apologise if this is a little bit wonky, but you're going to start sort of sketching your outline of your um, insect more or less in a minute, like I'm sort of starting to do here. And you're just doing a basic outline, so if you have a little look at all the different kind of sections that that insect has got, so all the different little parts, they've all got scientific names which would be really interesting for us to look at at a later date, like the thorax and antennas and trying to work out where they actually are on the insects that we're working on. And as you can see I'm trying to get my outline so that it's filling my A5 page in my sketchbook. I'm drawing my cut lines really, really faint in case I make a mistake and I need to go back and um, rub that out later. Um, I'm dr actually drawing the outline using um, a 6B pencil because I quite like working um, with those even though we know that the tone on there would be quite um, dark if I was to start kind of using sort of tonal work on and this stag beetle has got really really interesting antennas that's got all really detailed really different little sections there so if you have um, one of those insects that's got weird antennas I don't want to see you just drawing um, a line I want to see you actually sort of drawing the shapes um, of how all each of those sort of little sections um, starting to develop. Now what's quite interesting again about this um, stag beetle is the sections on his little legs here. Now each of those seems to have its own um, sort of little segmented um, areas there and again I'm wondering as I'm drawing here to be checking out some scientific illustrations because if you are into your artwork and you want to make a career out of um, your art, um, that might be sort of a career that you look into because people travel around the world um, discovering new 
and insects and things in the rainforests and somebody's got to document what they look like and it's not just all done photographically and um, people do sketches and make little notes they might turn the insects over and do little sketches of their undersides and things like that so it's all these different types of jobs and unusual jobs that you you know you could go into now I'm having a little look here so traditionally we know that an insect is classed as um it's got six legs now I know we talked about having spiders in our project that's fine and I know we know that they're not insects um, but we've decided because they're creepy and crawlies and some of us quite like might want to quite like drawing the textures um, of the legs and I'm just going to put a little guide line across there and you might want to use sort of that idea to sort of help me position where those legs are because I want to make sure that they're quite accurate and I've not got them sort of in the wrong places if you will and again I'm quite fascinated by all the different little sections that this particular little stag beetle um, has got himself I think I might do a little bit of research on this character to find out you know exactly and um, the kind of things he might have eaten when he was alive where he where he lived in Indonesia whether he had to have or lived in the daytime or whether it was dark now I've got an outline of sort of the basic shape going on there but I want to capture the patterns so I'm going to just Put patterns in there before I start putting any tonal work on so again it's got a little sort of shape going on here that little shape those shapes here and kind of very metallic and silver and um, he might be quite a nice one to do for a color picture later on now because we're looking at tone I'm going to do a little bit just to show you I'm not going to finish the whole insect because you've got to have time to get your outline done and then develop your tonal work and your tonal skills so I'm going to have a little look I'm going to start where the darkest tones are and for me I'm just going to zoom in there can I zoom in there I can I'm going to show you where a little section of where his little leg is here now it's got a little it's quite dark around the outside again remember using the side of your pencil so make sure that's quite dark and I'm using my pencil so it's going up and down it's getting quite smooth tone and it's really sharp darker round sort of the bottom of where he is there so I want to and I'm trying to create the illusion that that little part of his leg is 3D so and then I'm going to move on to this little part of his leg here we've got a little bit of a join and I'm going to take my tone going all the way down this bit here and I'm going to keep my line going nice and smooth but lightening up a little bit towards the centre of his leg and darkening up a little bit as I'm coming round to this bit here and I'm quite happy with that bit because he's got little bits of highlights here showing that it's a bit lighter and I'm going to move on to his little sections and again I'm treating each of those separately because they're all different tiny parts of his body there's not just one little line sticking off there that's his leg I've noticed I've missed off a tiny little claw there which I didn't spot the first time so again it's really important that you're observing all the time what you're doing and there we go we have one of his legs um, finished in tone well, I'll probably move on to maybe this leg here and I'll probably work it so that my hand wasn't going over and smudging so I'd start in sensible places and work my way out where all those dark um, pieces are so I hope that helps you for today's lesson and the example will be at the front and of course I'll be walking around to give you any added assistance and if you want to borrow the 6B school pencils the, the red ones there and we know okay the lettering's on the side of our pencils there and um, you may do just um, put your hand up or help yourself if I'm busy okay thank you folks